Jordan just said, do we have to talk about this? I, I agree. No, I'm traumatized from last night. No, too. it was brutal. The Nuggets will have to wait another night to see if they will be moving on to the next round. Last night was a disaster for them. We're going to talk more about it coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. See, there's the good Yay. news. TGIF. Yeah. I'm Corey Rose here with Jordan Chavez, Erica Lopez, and Ed Green. Good morning, everybody. we got some more good news for you. Those 80-degree temperatures we've been talking about finally here today. Some are like 84 <laughs> degrees today is where we're going. Let's take a look at what we've got going on. And it is clear skies right now. Temperatures are on the mild side. They're going to stay warm today. 71 would be normal for this time of year. We're going to be well above that today. And you can see the temperatures even right now are mild 54 degrees in Denver at this hour 40s and 50s what we're finding on the eastern plains 30s and 40s for the high country we've got mid 50s out to the west as well so today 84 degrees with mostly sunny skies well above normal for this time of year then tomorrow little system comes on through that'll give us a greater chance for showers and storms more clouds so only 76 degrees gone on Sunday a little high pressure ridge builds right back in sunshine and 82 Back to 76 degrees, back to showers and thunderstorms. Look at this cool air coming in on Tuesday with a high of just 63 degrees. Good chance for showers and storms. It leaves by midweek. Sunny skies return on Wednesday with a high 70 degrees. Thank you. We do want to show you what the drive is looking like. Dark and early on your Friday right now. We are overall pretty quiet at 501. Travel for you along 270 and New York Street looking fantastic. No issues out here at I-70 and 270. Travel at 225 and DTC Boulevard. Just a couple cars out here this hour. And then I-25 and 23rd Avenue moving along very nicely as well. As we bring you over to our map to check in. Lots of green. No rush out the door this hour. Travel times are quick. Denver to Boulder Drive 18 minutes on westbound Highway 36 and travel right now on westbound or eastbound I-70 between E-470 and 76 will only take you about 14 minutes. Thank you. New this morning, Denver police is investigating a crash at 4th and Federal involving a, motor, a motorist and a pedestrian. It happened around 1.30 this morning. One person was taken to the hospital. We don't know how they're doing or if the driver stayed on the scene. Officials say southbound Federal is closed right now. We will update you once we learn more. Today, closing arguments will start in the case of a man who shot and killed an assistant fire chief who was driving near a street race on I-70. Yesterday, Jeremy Rocha testified saying that he was acting in self-defense when he shot his gun nine times in June of 2022. Rocha was street racing with friends when he said John Jaros hit a Cam uh, Camaro in the race, then pulled up to Rocha's car. Rocha claims that Jaros was holding a gun so that he pulled out his gun too and started firing. Jaros was hit in the head and died. Rocha was arrested and charged five days later. Closing arguments are set to start at 9 o'clock this morning. Also today, a man accused of starting a deadly house fire that killed five people in Green Valley Ranch is set to be officially charged. Police say Kevin Bowie and two others poured accelerant on the home, killing five members of the Joel family, including three adults and two children. In March, the teen accused of starting the fire, Gavin Seymour, was sentenced to 40 years in prison, the maximum punishment allowed under his plea deal. Bowie's schedule is expected in court at 1230 this afternoon. The man charged with murdering four people at a home in Aurora in 2022 has been found guilty. Some of the victims filed for protection orders against him just days before the shooting. Joseph Castorena shot and killed three of his ex-girlfriend's family members and another man who lived on the property. He tried to kill his ex too, but she got away. Authorities found Castorena in Mexico months after the shooting. Yesterday, a jury found him guilty on four counts of murder, one for each victim and one charge of attempted murder. He will be sentenced in September. Each murder conviction carries a mandatory sentence of life in prison. Castro and his brother and cousin pleaded guilty this year to helping him escape. In New York, Republican leaders are taking turns in court to show support for former President Donald Trump and his criminal trial. Yesterday, Colorado's most prominent Republican, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, went. Boebert was one of several far-right Republican members of Congress in the courtroom. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Prosecutors say it was to cover up a payout to a porn star that Trump cheated on his wife with in an attempt to keep voters from finding out during the 2016 election. Trump is under a gag order that keeps him from criticizing prosecutors, the judge, or witnesses, so his allies like Boebert come to court to do it for him. The radical left wants President Trump to simply go away. And if President Trump just went away, this would all go away as well. And they are doing everything that they can to interfere in yet another election. 
Boebert called the trial a political witch hunt. She returned to D.C. after court to vote on a Republican effort to hold the Democratic attorney general in contempt of court. Aurora uh, Raria campus, excuse me, officials say that most of the people arrested at protests over the past month are not affiliated with the campus. In a briefing yesterday, officials said 80 people in total have been arrested for detained uh, since April 25th. Of those 80, 16 are students and three are faculty or staff. Auraria says the other 61 people are not affiliated with any of the schools on campus. Campus officials calculated the encampment as the cost campus nearly $300,000 between cleanup efforts, revenue loss from canceled events, maintenance on the Tivoli Quad, and loss of parking revenue. CU Regents are telling pro-Palestinian protesters occupying the Auraria Quad that they will not negotiate with their demands. The Board of Regents put out a short statement. They said the Regents are monitoring the protests. They support the protesters' First Amendment rights, but the statement also says, quote, no region is offering any policy changes in response to the demands. The protesters are demanding CU Denver cut off all financial ties with Israel and the U.S. military, disclose its financial investments, and end study abroad programs to Israel. It's the first time a university in Colorado has essentially told protesters to get lost with their demands. MSU Denver disclosed some financial information to protesters last week and hasn't said they plan to cut any ties or drop any investments. Today, middle school students will put their government knowledge to the test in a state civic speed competition. They're going to compete in a live quiz event, answering questions on subjects like the Constitution and branches of government. Ram Yalavarthi, who's now in the eighth grade, won the state B last year. He's in it again this year, and we asked him if he had any advice for other competitors. I make sure they stay updated on current events because a lot of the questions are based on what happened recently. Smart kid. The Colorado State champion will advance to the first ever National Civics Bee in Washington, D.C., where there will be more than $50,000 in prizes. Nine News is a sponsor of the Civics Bee. Our very own Kyle Clark will be the moderator. And if you missed the competition, you can watch it on KTVD and Nine News Plus Saturday night at 7 o'clock.